Get cracking. Well, we'll skip why do we care about minimizing DFAs for a second. And uh, and go to, uh, actually, number two, which is a nice warm-up. Minimize that DFA. Uh, unless it's, you know, so e easy that it pains you. Then you can move on. You stop doing your homework. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a tough class to tape because... Uh, there's a lot of dead air <laughs> and people are working. They do a dance routine. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could have like musical interludes yeah. while you guys are working. Get Rusty in <laughs> his banjo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess um I guess we can uh, start. First before we um Tackle number two, which is like the simplest, one of the simplest ones you could do that will explain things a bit. Why do, give me two reasons why we want to minimize DFAs. <laughs> size matters. Okay. I guess it's a meta reason. <laughs> um, so they don't, they don't like this in Texas, you're saying. Like small DFAs. Like the big, big, no. Uh, um, Let's just not go there. Yeah. <laughs> what? You're being recorded yes. now. What's that? So you're being recorded now. <laughs> oh, I, I could have. I just offended like uh, a huge, a huge part of the country. You're saying. <laughs> All right. It's true. No baloney tree moments. Uh, All right. No. Well, there's a theoretical. Let me narrow it down. There's a theoretical reason. And then there's like a, a practical reason too. Well, it helps us compare them. Yeah. We're able to compare them. Right. So the theoretical reason is it's it's a normal form. The minimal form is is it's the normal form for DFA. So it lets you know if two ones are the same. When you're proving something about them, you can reduce it to the minimal one. It's a very nice thing to know that you can always do. So that's the theoretical reason for it. It's the it's the canonical normal form. It lets you solve things in a very methodical way. Just minimize it and then do something. So it lets you program, like program a computer to manipulate DFAs. What's the practical reason? Well, what's... We're trying to build on these things sometimes. Right. So there is a practical... I mean, there is a practical use for these things, right? These are control logics for, for simple machines, you know, like switches and... Uh, well, or, you know, little, <laughs> little doors or something. Who knows what? Garage doors. Yeah, garage, you know, they're control logics for all sorts of things. Therac 25, uh, <laughs> irradiation machines, all that. So, you know, you minimize the, the complexity, you save some money, you get a raise. Uh, your company does well. So it's good to, you know, smaller is better. Um, all right, so that's why it's good. So what's the answer for this, for number two? A and C get joined. So, so Andrew, you were asking, how do you do this? Right. So, what's the principle? Can someone remind me? So we're trying to figure out which one of these are different. Which two, like, so there's three things here. Which ones are definitely different? We can't collapse these two because they're, this is ex not except, this is except. So they're definitely different. These are definitely different. These are the only possible ones that are the same. And how do we know if they're the same or not? We check to see if they're dependent on. So what does that mean? Like, 
we we just we're testing to see if they act the same. If they behave the same in every possible way, they are the same. Right? They're indistinguishable. And how do they behave? Give it a zero, this goes to B. Give this a zero, it goes to B. Give this a one, it goes to C. Give this a one, it goes to C. They look the same. Well, they talk to the same, they act the same, they are the same. They do, they're exactly the same. All right. So that's sort of, that's the essence of the, the whole algorithm. All right. Okay, so what about the next one? Did you guys finish that? Who? I hear one, one yeah? I think everyone else needs some more time. Give it a, give it a bit more time. By the way, do you recognize what this this DFA is for? Yeah, this thing is the last number is a zero. All right. The, there's a one that goes from the B to the C, but not a one that goes from the B to the A. So for two? For, yeah, for two. Oh, here, so here's a good question. Maybe these aren't the same because this guy, you know, B goes to C, but B doesn't go to A. So maybe they're not the same. Is that a valid argument or not? Which, I mean, B's pointing to C, but it's not pointing to A. Right, we're only interested in the behavior once you're in that state. Right, if you collapse these together, then B is pointing to both of them, but that's fine. That's fine. It's only like future performance, I guess, that's, uh, that's really important. You know, what, what is this thing, you know, what are you going to do given you're in, in that state? What is pointing to you has no effect on how you, how that state will behave in the future. Where you came from, you know, doesn't just, doesn't tell you anything about how you behave when you get there. You behave exactly the same whether you came from here or from there, or from wherever, given a certain input stream. But that's a good question. All right. Make sure you all get. The next one. By the way, which one? What is the next one? You recognize that? It's going to take a while, but it's good. Good practice. Yeah, it's this. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Question. Oh, more. There's more.
Whoops. Some challenging problems at the end there for you. If you're interested, if you're willing. willing to take hmm? It looks. No. no, that's not it. But it, it looks close. What's your question? Mm, there is a way to do it that way. The thing is, certain things will become equal, but then those will. That those equalities will cascade backwards. So things that don't appear equal will become equal. Right? So here I have like B, D, and F. I don't see over here is that correct? Or not? Um, <coughs> no. You have to be careful. To be careful. Actually, why don't we? One thing is things that things that are accept and not accept can never be the same, even if they have the same transition. So B and D. One's accept, one's reject. They have the same transitions coming in, right. but they can't. They're distinguished another way. All right. So except for that. So okay, I can see that. Actually, that's a good question. Here's a taking aside here. Here's a proof. Well, it comes up here, but it also comes up here. Let me write down the transitions for A on zero and one. On 0, it goes to B, and on 1, it goes to C, right? Correct? Yep. What about B? On 0, where does it go? It goes to B, and on 1, it goes to C, right? Mm -hmm. So I claim that A and B are, are also equivalent, so I can collapse this all into one thing. Because they have, look, they behave exactly the same way. You feed it a 0, it behaves that way. You feed it a 1, it behaves that way. So that can't be right. Where, where, what's the, uh, where's the error in my reasoning? They already write one. So there's a difference. One is an except state. On, a, on an empty, then one of them stays in the accept and the other one doesn't. We've got one, two, three answers, and everyone else? Does everyone appreciate what the question is? So they act the same. Why are they different? Yeah, once this is final. You can't just look at the transitions. This is a final state. That's not a final state. Thank, thank you, everyone. <laughs> if they were both non-final, then you could say Yeah, if they were both non-final or if they were both final, you could collapse them together. But it's easy to forget that. The base case is whether it's final or not final. So you have to use use that. And then, yeah, once you figure out things that are very equivalent, you can propagate that backwards. I guess the same the beginning state. No, this, the beginning state doesn't matter. You can collapse the beginning state with other things. Remember, anything, an arrow pointing in doesn't affect you in any way. If you do the transition table, you always have to indicate whether it's an accept state or a start right. state, too. And that's how you differentiate between two rows, which otherwise look the same. Right. If right. you forget that, then you run into trouble. Right. All right. You want to work through this? The shy yes. test the way we should do this? We'll do, we'll do both methods, the shy and the Heather method. All right, so what would the, the shy method be? So we start with B, C, D, E, F, G. And then A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, it's going to be tough for me to draw straight. 
straight lines. But I'll try. My darndest. Yeah. All right, so we got to put on all the differences first. So D is certainly different to everything, but or different, different from, different from. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that was a terrible lapse in grammar there. Uh, D is different from everything but E, right? So we can just cross out, put X's everywhere. There, because, and same for E, it differs with everything but D. So we can put X's there. Now, I don't know, we can kind of do this in an ad hoc way. I mean, you could be systematic about it, but, <laughs> but, but you can just look at it. I mean, certain things, Am I missing a transition? Well, I mean, you can eyeball it. Certainly, so the things that are, we differentiate between things that are accepts and not accepts, right? Now we can differentiate between things that go to an accept you know, so f goes to, to um, accepts, so it can't be the same as g because g on on one input go, goes to uh, reject. So we're now we're like looking at the sort of extended family instead of just you know we're looking at all the relations. So on zero, f goes to an accept state and g doesn't. So certainly, for example, f f and g must differ. I guess we can just systematically, well, we can, you can just do it by the graph instead of looking at the table. I mean, so clearly, F, what other things must F be different from? It can't, this goes to two accepts, so it can't be either A or C, right? It might, it might possibly be B. So F can't be A and F can't be C. What about B? What do, what do we say? B can't be A because B, be a, B goes to two accepts and A doesn't. A goes to two rejects. So it can't be A or C, right? So we can get rid of B, A, and where's B, C? Right there. All right, are we missing anything else? B and G can't be the same, right? Right, for the same reason, because G goes... G goes to two accepts, non accepts, and B, B doesn't. So we have all those things. All right, what's left? There's A and C. Well, and again, another sort of rule of thumb is it's good to start kind of at the end, if, you, if there is an end, and then work backwards. If I started trying to figure out whether things were the same here, I'd have to go all the way down to, to figure out the story. But if I start here, and you know, there's a good, better chance that I'll be able to figure things out if we work backwards. Yeah. Okay. So what about? Are there any you suspect look the same? B and F. You suspect anything else? G and C. Yeah. All right. So both of those actually would, should be pretty easy. Right? Are they the same? What does B do on a zero? It goes here. It goes to D. What does F do on a zero? It goes to D. Ah, so they're the same that way. What about ones? They agree with ones. So we can collapse these two. They're really the same thing. They act the same They're in every possible way. So B and F are the same. Check. All right, so these are the same. Now, what was the other, what was the other suspect? C and G. What about those? On a 1, where does C go? To G. On a 1, where does G go? To G. And what about 0? Same, same. They go to the same place. 
right? So those are the same too. They act the same. The transition, they're both accept, uh, rejects. You have to check that also. So C and G are the same. And what about what's left? Uh, A and G. Oh, there's A and G and A and C. So I guess, so now we can say, what about, where does A go on a zero? It goes to this blob, the BF blob. Where does it go on a one? Well, actually, stop. A goes to the BF blob on a, on a zero. And where does C go? It goes to the same thing, to these equivalent things. So A and C are the same, behave the same for zeros. And... They behave the same for ones too, right? Mm -hmm. They both point to the this collapsed C G node. This is why you want to start at the bottom. Yeah, it's good to start at the bottom. If you can, if you can, so this is kind of like incorporating. This is an easy problem. I mean, because we can visualize it. anything you get to do personally instead of programming your computer should be relatively easy. And if you you can exploit, you know, exploit things like this, you always try to propagate backwards from try to propagate backwards from. Uh, from the um, from these notes, from the accept notes. Now, why couldn't a computer do that? Why couldn't a computer propagate backwards? It doesn't know the graph yet. Like we're just eyeballing the graph, and we can tell what's pointing to this. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually, on a on a structure like this, it can't figure out what's pointing to it unless it actually does a search, right? We can just do that visually because we have this great visual processing hardware, and we can see ah, these things are pointing to that. Right, so if, if unless that's specifically programmed in the data structure, you know that's going to take the computer a long time. The thing that's trivial for us to see, you know, what's pointing to it, that's going to take it a lot of time. So that's why the the shy method is actually very good for a computer. You know, it's dynamic programming n squared. It's very nice. If you if you actually did it propagating backwards this way without exploiting some some like parent data structure, then it would be an n cubed algorithm. It turns out, but that's not important. Anyway, so A and C are the same. Yeah. So it looks like like this. What's that? I, oh, I haven't done D and E? I haven't done D. No, we did figure out that D and E were different. Oh. Oh, I guess we didn't. Well, well D, D goes to accept states. D only go, travels, D visits accept states, you know, on any input. E goes to reject states. So they can't be the same. They act differently. Yeah. All right. So what do we have? So we have something like this. So on zero, it goes there. Um, I'm confused. Oh, these are all the same. That's why. On one, it goes to itself. Um, got the zero, got the one, got the one, got the zero. What are we missing? The one goes here, and the zero goes here. Did anyone figure out what this was? Any, by any chance? No? I'll tell you, it's not important. It's actually a lot like this one. This is the last thing is a zero. This is the second to last thing is a zero. <laughs> See, because you go, all right, if we get a zero, no matter what we get, we accept if, on the next stage. If we get a one, no matter what we get, we reject on the next stage. But then if you get like, let's say you get a one and a zero, then, then since the last character read was zero, it's just like being here. Yeah. So this tree is just enumerating all the possibilities for the, like this. This remembers these states. Remember the previous two characters read. So zero 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 one one zero one one. So, but that's too much information. All you really need is the. You don't need all that information. So it can collapse. It's kind of interesting. I wonder. I wonder if it collapses. If you do the, it gets really pretty. <laughs> you do you keep on doing like third to last thing is zero. I wonder if it, it probably collapses like that. I haven't thought about it. But it probably collapses like diagonally. 
I don't know. But anyway, so there you go. There you go. That was that. You can skip the next one. That's just, you pretty much know how to do it. Oh, we have to do the, the Heatherway. Well, you know, I haven't ever seen the Heatherway before, so this is kind of scary for me, but I'll, I'll try it. So A, B, C, F, G. D and E are different, right? Because they're rejects. So, so I, zero, one. So D, D stays in the club. E goes to F, G. So who stays in the club? A stays in the club. D, E. Do you know what I mean by stays in the club? Yeah, it stays in this big group. C, C stays in the club. F doesn't, right? D, E. And G goes to, stays in the club. Yeah. So B goes to B E and B E and B as long as B E are in the same club, you're okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right. So what happens now? So we get A C G. A C G. Hey, that's pretty good, huh? No, but you have to be. We have to look at them. Huh? We have to look at them because they want to change. Oh, oh, but I. Yeah. But I know they don't. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> no, they don't. They go to a different club. You're right. All right. And then we get... Uh, all right. It's not as easy as I thought. B, B, F. And then... Are separate. Yikes. So A... So help me out, someone. A goes to the B, F club on zero. A goes to the BF club on zero, and it stays in the ACG club on one. And same with C and same with G. It goes to the ACG club. Where does B go on zero? It goes to D. It goes to the D club. The D club. The D club. And the E club. And the E club. And same with F, right? Those are already singular, so we don't even have to evaluate them. Hmm. Yeah, we don't You're right. Okay. I was just curious where they went. <laughs> D, D, this is D, E. These will have to be, they have to be different, right? Yeah. It's a good way to check if you made a mistake, too. So E goes to F, F, G. You don't really have to do this, but if they were the same, you, you would have screwed up. You know, it's a good error check. Ah, so those are the groups. So that's, a, I mean, it's the same, it's a very similar argument, you know. Yeah, I guess, then drawing that, I guess, yeah, good algorithm. Good algorithm. All right. So that's it for that. Um, all right, what else do I want to talk about? All right, I guess we'll give, um, I want you to give a, a grammar for this right here. Problem five says give it for the previous problem, but I inserted, I inserted a problem since then. So it really refers to this. Uh, I'm very sorry about that. I just noticed. So, but I, hopefully it doesn't affect a lot of people. Yeah, so turn this into a, a regular grammar. Does anyone need a hand on, need a word of explanation what that means? I know you do. No? I was going to come around. Does, how many people could do that? Turn this into a regular grammar. What's a regular grammar? 
Well, so it's something of the form like A, you know, start goes to 1, A, A goes to 0, or 0, A, or epsilon, something like that. You guys all comfortable with those? No? No? All right. All right, I'll give you some examples first. Yeah, it's the same as a linear, uh, left linear grammar, is a regular grammar. Okay. All right, so let me give you an example then. I'll go reverse. I'll give you a grammar, and I want. Linear grammars also grammar? Also linear? Because the reverse of the string is also Yeah, I guess maybe I have to think about what. I'm not sure what the definition of linear grammar is. That's why, you know, what it refers to exactly here. Right, you're right, right. Right uh, regular grammars are also, right linear grammars are also regular. Um, but let me, let me do this problem. So what if I have something like S goes to 1A, A goes to epsilon. What language does this represent? What, can you give me a regular expression for what this is? Just it's just one, because if you follow the rules, you start here, drop a one and an a in there. A is only epsilon. It's just the language one. You know. But now, what if I had ah s goes to one a, a goes to one a or epsilon. So, so you have to have at least one one, and then you could have more of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you could go one a, and then expand this into one a. So you get one one a, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one one star, right? And it gets more complicated. Um, why don't I turn this machine here into one? It's actually very, very simple. All right, so start is there. So if I get a 1, I go to C, right? So I say S goes to 1, C. If I get a 0, I go to B. So, it goes to, so I, I just do that. So S can either go to 1, C or 0, B. All right, and then what? I mean, basically, I'm just, this is S. Yeah, so you just put in something for each transition. So, so yeah, what does B go to? It can go to 0B, so 0 and then another, another, you know, and do it one more time. Or 1C, or a trapsalon. I can just say stop. It's allowed to stop because of that. And C goes to... 1C or 0B, or that's it. All right, so why don't you do that for this one in practice? Or do something else if you know it already. The minimized one, just to give you guys a break. Are you drawing it right now? Yeah. I erased it accidentally. Let's see, I have it here. Zero, one. Zero, one. All right, and I guess I'll say S, B, C, or B, D, E. I'll call them B, D, and E. Uh oh, that's a D. Just so we can have consistent notation. All right, I want to see some answers. Yeah? On the minimal machine, this this is accurate. You don't need that arrow. It could be a self loop instead. 
it, but that's no different. Because you're just saying the next to last character is a zero. You could either loop on itself or it could go off to the start state. No. No, it couldn't. There's a reason why it couldn't. Oh, it has to go back and allow another zero, single zero to come in? Right, it has to get... Because if you get two ones... Uh -huh. I see what you're saying. Hmm. You're it saying you could you just go this way. Uh, no, I was claiming that you could just loop. I oh, know the difference is because this is an accept. This oh, is an oh, accept. D &D, D &D. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are accepts. So if you loop back, you get an accept. Right. If you went there, it's not accept. I should have written yeah. my circles. Yeah. Yeah. Those accepts will trick you every time. Yeah, you could write it out like that too. Yeah. yeah. So I just put it up, well, not like, well, like before, but just like not A, B, D, but instead just A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Okay. Good. I don't know. Check with your neighbor. I did. She didn't know either. Why not? I think I have different, different letters. Oh, I, um. He drew a different one on them. Yeah, I did. The, the reference. See. Oh, sorry. The reference has changed. Wow. There's no one here, actually. That's uh, the one is. Oh, that, that should. That's. The one is actually going back to S. I should have erased that, but I didn't erase well enough. We have answers. Yeah? All right, so what's the answer? No, it's 42. <laughs> All right. Quick. Or one? S. Okay. All right, so this is mindless and trivial, right? Trivial. All right. So final states can go to empty set. Yeah. All right. Um, so they're not so bad, huh? All right, so the question is how to turn regular expressions to grammars. Let's see, we're... Well, why don't we work through that? There's, I think there's some ad hoc rules. You could always turn it into a machine. Uh, but you don't have to do turn it into a machine. Yeah. So what about A? What could you do? S goes to 0B. B, B goes to 1C. And then what does C go to? 0C or epsilon. There you go. So this is how you... You can make... You know, you can add tons of new letters wherever you like if you have some complex structure. So this... So you start with S. Then you get 0B... And then you get, say, we'll derive, say, 0, 1, 0, 0. You go S, 0, B, 0, 1, C, 0, 1, 0, C, 0, 1, 0, 0, 
C0100 epsilon. Right? That's how I got, say, for example. If you draw the machine, you don't actually draw the arrows that don't connect. Like, they, like I did like 0B or 1F. You know, you're drawing both arrows out. That, like, it did back to the start. Huh. So the question is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you were actually to draw the machine out, like, when converting it, instead of, like, actually writing yeah. it out first, because I draw it and then it's uh -huh. better visually. Seems like you have to have a zero and one going out of each each state. Yeah. And so when I did that, I had more, more stuff. Yeah. More yep. Yeah. If you draw the machine, you'll get more expressions. Isn't that more complicated <laughs> thing. That's. Is it okay? Is and are we going to take marks off of you? No. I mean, is it a standard? I mean, is that? Well, it's better. I mean, if you can describe something in a compact way, that's always better because okay. it's easier to understand. Okay. I mean, this represents. This characterizes zero one zero star a lot better than. You know, a bunch, a whole bunch of symbols. But usually, it's obvious when you can make reductions too. Yeah. Can S go to zero one B? Um, it could. That wouldn't be like a linear grammar. Yeah. Only one. Yeah. Yeah. So it turns out if we just if we modify these rules a little bit, then we'll get things like if we can have symbols on both sides of this, then we'll get things that aren't regular expressions. You know, we'll we'll break the pumping lemma. You know, like. If we had S goes to 0, B1 or something, then we can get 0 to the N, 1 to the N. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So these things are more powerful. Than, uh, but so if we just do rules like this, where the, you know, the, the characters are on the left, then, then it's, that's just like, yeah, regular expression. All right. Um, really quickly then, what about, what about this one? A, A, B, or... B, C, star. What do you think? So S goes to... A, A, so it goes to A, F. And what does F go to? Well, we can't just do two. We, we, like, we want to do it using just... Uh, um, Using right regular notation. So epsilon or Yeah, I guess. Yeah, is that what I did? I'm getting confused now. I hate it when I get confused. Um, yeah, okay. So so A so it'll go to A. Oh, I'm so confused. Help me, someone. All right, A G. I guess that's right. A G or B H. Ah, I get it now. And now G goes to G goes to B F. Is that right? And we'll H goes to C F. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm so confused. <laughs> so you're saying A, G, F? Is what you mean? Well, that won't work because. Or F? That's pretty circular, right? That's like an infinite loop if you do that. But that's okay, right? No, because no, then how do you, so let's say I, I start, I go, okay, S, A, F, A, F, A, F, A, F. That'd be really bad if I kept on substituting F in there. You know, my computer would have a fit. Yeah, so you can't do that. So that's why you kind of have to make up a new symbol and do the recursion that way. Just like uh, what we did here. Yeah. There, these are these are confusing, huh? All right. Next. Next thing is. Ah, this is a good one. Yeah. If you loop again, let's say the question like A, then A B, then do B C again. Is that allowed, or do you have to do A B A B A B? A. When you have like the parentheses start, you have to do. You can do A B C. Either one. Yeah. Yeah. You can do either one. 
So, so I guess probably what I meant was FF then. FF? No, because you can't have two, uh, two non-terminal. Not yeah, not in this in this sort of uh, setup. It, for uh, for uh, left linear grammar, you can't do that. Right. The only rules, the only things we can do are split up into two things. Like one one is a terminal. Or no? Yeah. 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 That's what Shai said. All right, I'll, I'll trust him. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I, I have to look that up, actually. But I believe that's the case. Um, in any case, moving on. So look at number seven. Here's an argument, your favorite sort of argument, that arbitrary number of zeros followed by an arbitrary number of ones followed by an arbitrary number of twos. That language is not a regular language. So you could use a pumping lemma, like you all know and love. Right? Or I have a better idea. I say, well, I already know that arbitrary number of zeros followed by arbitrary number of ones is not regular. And this thing contains that, contains something that's not regular, so it's not regular also. Is that valid or not? That valid reasoning. It already contains something really weird, and we've proven that's not regular. That's enough, right? Um, we never said anything about Zero zero oh, 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 L equals M. Ah, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, those are all equal. They sh greater than or equal to zero and equal to each other. Uh -oh. All right, sorry about that. Of course. Because otherwise it's zero star, one star, two star. Yeah. So what I mean is... Yeah, L equals M equals N in seven. So I should say zero to the N, one to the N, two to the N, and zero to the L. I don't know what I was thinking, but there you go. So anyways, we already showed we already showed this was not regular, right? And this is oh god, this is what I mean. Yeah. A different number of All right. So this this one is is having issues. This problem. Maybe my whole point was that just because you show one thing is regular and then you have a bigger thing, or you show one thing is not regular and you have something bigger that contains it, doesn't necessarily mean that's also not regular. You can't use that line of reasoning. You know, you have to sort of. That's false reasoning, because like the the universe, you know, like the language that has everything contains non-regular sets, right? Zero or one star contains tons of non-regular sets, but it is regular. So you can't just say argue that way. All right, so I've got to fix that. That's on the to-do list. Uh, all right, I guess the last thing is maybe some decision algorithms. Oh, go. So why don't you, who can tell me? I'll start you off. Give me a decision algorithm. So some way of figuring out whether a, a language L decide, you know, whether whether a language L contains the string one zero 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 one zero one. So I have some language given to me via regular expression. What do you mean by decision algorithm? So decision algorithm is something you could program into a computer. Let's say you have a, a representation for the finite state machine or the regular expression, can you give me an algorithm that decides? So if I, if I give you finite state machines, can you give me an algorithm that decides whether that machine accepts 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1? Run it through the machine, right? So what's the point? Why am I bringing this up? So the point is you can actually treat machine as data. So what I'm, I'm feeding you is not, it, you're switching the thing around. I'm not. I have the one zero 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 one zero one with me, and people are that's that's like the program now, and people are feeding me machines, and I'm deciding if that machine is good or not, if I accept it or not. So my cl so the machines are the language now. The set of machines that accept one zero 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 one is a language itself. The really freaky thing here is everything. 
everything is a language. I guess that's what I wanted to talk about. So I'll, everything is a language, right? Everything is strings of data, right? Programs, the data itself, the input, they're all strings of data. So you can think of them, you know, as numbers too. It's kind of a really, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trippy thing to think about. Like I was thinking about it, like, um, you know, yeah, I was like, whoa, man. No, for example, all right, so this is going to be a philosophical digression for a second. Do you believe that numbers exist? So like, doesn't, do you have to actually observe the number for it to exist? Like you have one, two, three, four, they all exist. And we know there's infinite number of numbers because we can always keep on adding one. But do, do all those numbers exist without our having ever written them down or not? So if a number falls in the forest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if a number falls in the forest. Isn't that what dot, 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 dot is for? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. But I mean, I, you know, most people believe that number, all the numbers exist, right? Even though you can't, you haven't bothered to check that it's there. <laughs> you know, you haven't personally checked that 5,993,000 whatever exists. It, it pretty, it's probably there, right? <laughs> you believe that. But now the thing is, the really weird thing is that since everything is a number, this does a lot of weird things to creativity. For example, like if you look at MP3s, I think, I, th I think every MP3 can be encoded in a binary string, which is in the range of two to the t two to the ten million to like maybe let's give it every reasonable like pop song, I don't know, or song that we listen to. It's in this range. That's like a very rough range. So every MP3 is a string that lives in this range. Okay, it can be encoded in. And all these numbers exist. We just said that, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that er not only every song that's ever been written exists there, but all the future songs are also in there too, yeah. which is very strange. But that's, but <laughs> no, but the numbers exist. But, but wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that strange? MP3s are compressed to the standard of our ability to hear. Now, our ability to hear could improve in the future. All right, so I could give you a bigger range. Okay, you know, but like, what you're arguing. or liter I could give you literature or something. You could do. There's a range for all books too, which is within a hundred pages. So why don't you copyright them all? Yeah, I was going to copyright all these numbers <laughs> and make a fortune. No, but the, what's my point? It's not philosophical digressions. The point is that everything is a number, and it's really it starts getting very weird. Not only are the numbers numbers, but the the music is a number, the literature, the programs are numbers, and you can treat the programs as input too. So in number nine, the program is plug, you know, this is a meta program. It's not a finite state machine, it's a Turing machine, which we'll talk about later. But it's a program that takes other programs as input and it evaluates them on one triple zero one zero one. So everything is like completely backwards. What you think is data is not, it's the program. And what you think is the program is data. And that's where you're going to get all sorts of weird things. And like uh, Gödel's incompleteness theorem, if you ever heard that. Heard of that. So um, let's see. I guess it's time to stop. I'll let you guys think about the other ones. There are more, more, ele more elaborate decision algorithms. But you don't have to do the, for any of them for your homework, so that's fine. And I finally fixed number 12 is, is that problem that I kind of messed up last time. So that one is interesting because it's an example of it's totally miscellaneous, but it's an example of where you can get rid of epsilons in an NFA without doing any like horrible subset conversions to DFAs. So figure out if you can get rid of the epsilons there. That's a little problem. And um, the last thing is applications of regular expressions. We so it's, I guess it's just a promise right now. Rusty and I are working on this. There are really good applications to regular expressions. A lot of cool programs you could use in Unix to make your life easier and We'll try and you know give you an introduction to that. So it's a little practical, practical thing to regular expressions, and hopefully you could, uh, hopefully we'll build a calculator, <laughs> machine that calculates. So that's our goal. You want more existential exercises? You want more existential exercises? <laughs> oh, this this thing is chock full of them, and this subject is is just crazy. But I guess that's it for now.